Trials Against Animals in the Middle Ages The trials against animals are one of the most surprising aspects of the human-animal relationship in the past and were not studied until the last century. The first to do so was the British historian Edward Evans, who published The Medieval Prosecution and Capital Punishment of Animals in 1906. This work, written after 40 years of research in numerous archives, describes in detail nearly 200 trials against animals carried out in France, Germany, Switzerland, and Italy between the 15th and 17th centuries. Apparently, these trials were based on a text from the Old Testament, Exodus 21:28, which says, When an ox gores a man or a woman to death, the ox shall be stoned, and its flesh shall not be eaten, but the owner of the ox shall be acquitted. Despite the absurdity of these processes, very few jurists dared to criticize them. The victims were mostly domestic animals, pigs, oxen, cows, horses, and especially donkeys. In the Middle Ages, it was very common for pigs to roam freely through the streets of cities and even inside homes. This coexistence naturally involved risks. Even in Paris and other large cities, pigs would move freely through the streets, causing accidents. On October 13, 1131, the heir to the French crown fatally fell from his horse on a Parisian street when a stray pig crossed his path. The culprit of the disastrous accident was not the horse but the pig, a porcus diabolicus, as Abbot Suger called it. This animal, despite its importance in medieval human nutrition, was seen as vile, and the prince's death was considered humiliating. If he had died hunting wild boars, it would have been very different. It would have been considered a glorious death fitting for nobles, princes, and kings. In addition to causing accidents, pigs occasionally included in their diet the body of a baby or a small child who, without parental supervision, was mutilated or severely injured. In fact, most of the trials against pigs were for this reason. As for oxen, cows, and horses, it was due to their size or bravery that they sometimes injured or killed humans. What were these larger animals accused of? Simply, voluntary homicide. Christianity desacralized animals, and although since St. Augustine they were considered irrational beings, this did not prevent them from being seen as moral, perfectible beings and, therefore, responsible for their actions. If they committed a crime, in the Middle Ages, animals were treated like human beings. They had to pay for it. Apart from homicides, there were also trials for many other causes. Witchcraft, blasphemy, crop destruction, theft, bestiality. Many cats were accused of witchcraft, being associated with Satan if they were black. In this regard, there were large massacres of cats in the medieval era. A sow was accused of blasphemy in 1394 in Mording, France, for having entered a church and eaten the sacred host found on the high altar. The trials could be civil or ecclesiastical. When it was a plague, the church took charge of the case. The bishop would formally curse the entire accused group, whether they were locusts, cockroaches, rats, or moles. In civil trials, the animal was mostly imprisoned. On the day of the trial, the animal was brought before the judge on foot or in a cart. A rowdy crowd followed the animal, spitting at it, throwing objects, and mocking it. The condemned animal was hanged or burned, and before being hanged, it was usually strangled. The arguments put forward by prosecutors and defense lawyers were sometimes extravagant. Let's look at just one example. In 1379, a trial was held in a Belgian village against a pack of hungry dogs accused of entering a villager's house and killing the owner's son. 
Among these dogs were some puppies. The animals were captured, tried, and sentenced to death. However, the village priest managed to save the puppies, arguing that they had followed the bad example of their parents. Rats, locusts, snails, birds, moles, and other animals also caused harm to humans and their crops, even more so in that era. Often, the destruction of a crop meant hunger and death, as the smaller animals and insects that caused this damage could not be detained. They were formally cursed. It goes without saying that these curses were ineffective, but the church always had an explanation for everything. In 1338, a plague of beetles devastated the fields of a region in Tyrol. After being cursed, the insects returned to their old habits. The bishop then explained that the beetles had ignored him because of the many sins committed by the local population. Another crime some animals were accused of was bestiality. In these cases, the accused would appear before the court accompanied by the man or woman with whom they had sexual relations. A well-documented case occurred in France in 1470. A certain Simon Briois from Amiens was caught by a merchant in a very compromising position in a stable at an inn. Accused of a crime against nature, he was tried and sentenced. The young mare he had copulated with was also condemned. Although reason eventually prevailed over time, animal trials did not completely disappear. In the 19th century, there were still some cases. The trials against animals from the Middle Ages and later seem utterly absurd to us. But the medieval mindset was very different from our own. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos.